I'm here in the lab today to do our first demonstration in electrochemistry. Um, I've got a couple pieces of equipment. I have these four containers. Um, these two over here are, they, they might look familiar to you, that bluish color is a pretty good indicator. Um, but we have two copper solutions and two zinc solutions. Here we have copper sulfate, copper two sulfate, copper two sulfate, uh, one molar of each, zinc, uh, zinc nitrate, Oh, excuse me, zinc chloride and zinc chloride, one molar of each. Um, and then I have back here, uh, maybe out of view, I have some zinc plating and I have some copper plating. Um, when you're using metals in the lab, um, because when they sit out in, in the atmosphere, they become oxidized, right? Oxygen reacts with them and they, and they uh, rust. I'm just going to take this um, little piece of steel wool and I'm just going to ablate these. I just want to take that uh, oxidation coating off so that I expose the elemental metal itself. So there, I'm going to do it to that zinc. I'm going to do it to this zinc. And you can actually see the oxidation on this copper here, right? That green stuff, that's that's reacted copper, that's not what we want. We want some fresh, shiny copper. I don't know if you can see the difference on that. There's the non, there's the ablated side. So it does make some difference. You do want to take that outermost edge off and you want to do it before you take the mass, right? Because if you do this after you take the mass, your mass is going to be inaccurate, right? You have less mass initially than you expected. All right, and here we go with this one. Okay, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to drop um, a copper into the copper solution. I'm going to drop a zinc into the copper solution. I'm going to drop a zinc into the zinc solution, and I'm going to drop a copper into the zinc solution. And I want you to predict which of these is going to react. So pause the video now, make your predictions. Uh, no one's going to judge you if you are incorrect. Okay, welcome back. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is copper into copper. So you can see that shiny edge toward you. Then I'm going to do zinc into zinc. Not, nothing so far. Um, next I'm going to do, uh, let's do copper into zinc. And then I don't know if this is the one that I bleated or not, so I'm just going to do it again real quick. And I'm going to do zinc into copper. Ooh, interesting. All right, so copper into copper, zinc into copper, copper into zinc, zinc into zinc. I don't know if you guys can see this at all, so I'm going to try to get you a top-down view of what's happening in each of these... Um, as you can see, the zinc in the copper has turned to black. Doesn't look like any of the others have reacted. So it looks like the only reaction that we got out of this demonstration is zinc into copper. All right, pause the video. We're going to have class again in just a moment. Uh, come back to class, and then we're going to continue to see how we're going to take advantage of this in a real world situation. So I have set up for you a galvanic cell. A galvanic cell is um, a way that we can transfer electrons from one solution to the other. And I have a, a zinc, a piece of zinc here in the zinc solution, and I've got a piece of copper there in the copper solution. Um, notice that my alligator clip is out of the solution by, by some small amount, um, and, and that's necessary. What is also necessary is this thing. This is called a multimeter. Right? Um, there are a lot of multimeters out there. Who knows which one you might see. Um, if, you, if you go to pursue something like electrochemistry or physics, you'll probably become pretty familiar with them. Um, I'm going to turn it to, so a couple of important pieces of information. Black means that electrons are coming in. So black means electrons are coming in. Red means electrons are going out. So which way are electrons coming from and which way are they going? That's going to be an important piece of information for us. I'm going to turn this to 2 volts. Where's my 2 volts on here? 
two volts. And I'm going to attach my electrons going in here to this black, to my zinc. And electrons going out to my copper. And this should allow for those electrons to flow um, from this zinc all the way through this cable into this cable and back out into that copper uh, solution on the other side allowing for that reaction to occur. Allowing for that reaction to occur. Hmm. I said allowing for that reaction to occur. Something's amiss. Let's take a minute. You guys try to figure it out. Okay, so the solution to our problem is something called a salt bridge. We need to keep the charges balanced on both sides of this reaction. We can't have these electrons flowing into sol a solution without allowing for negative par charged particles to flow out. Right, if we're talking about electromotive force, these electrons are going to try to push into this solution. They can't. There's too many electrons in there already. There's, there's a perfect balance between positive and negative in that solution already. So if we don't let electrons flow out, we do not have a complete circuit. So here this salt bridge is going to serve as our um, as a way to transfer those negative and positive charges to keep those charges balanced. Let's see if it worked. Bingo, bango, bongo. And that, my friends, is how you generate an electrical circuit. This we call a galvanic cell. It's also called a voltaic cell because it happens um, obviously under all these circumstances, because it happens uh, thermodynamic, it is thermodynamically favorable. It happens spontaneously. I, I, I'm going to say it, I, you know, they don't use that lingo anymore. Um, and just to show you guys uh, the reaction that uh, happened before, I'm just going to dip this in there, and you can see right, it immediately gets plated in those copper ions, so it becomes black you know, almost immediately. All right, thanks, guys. Uh, I'll, we'll talk in just a moment.